Hey folks, this is my mate Jeff. We just had a good long chat about his dog and it's a pretty freaky little situation. What's happening, Jeff? He's picking up poo. He's okay. A, his own kangaroo poo, any poo around. And he just keeps doing it, you know. Yeah. And it's the vet says he said it's a habit. A habit. It's a habit, yeah. He's got into it as a habit. And he said you the only way you can break him, he says possibly put a muzzle on him. Yeah. Well I tried that. 15 seconds was the longest I could keep it on. Really? He's a big lab, you know. Wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I thought I'd try this zapper. Yeah, we'll have a chat about that in a minute. Yeah. Sounds like Jeff has had the dog for about six years, a Labrador. Mm. What's his name? Oh, I've only had him for a year. You've had him for a year? Yeah. Sorry, he sorry. A, he was a gift dog. Yep, yep. And uh, he was six years old when I got him, yeah. Cool, yeah. so he was six years old, he's a rescue dog, so Jeff rescued him, which we love to hear about rescue dogs. And he had this habit from before, but what Jeff is saying is quite crucial. There's a couple of things you need to look out for with uh, this situation of dogs eating poo. It, and if you've gone to vet check and he said, no, nothing wrong with the dog, it could be a condition. I know horses get a condition called pica where they have a, a lack of minerals and so you have to give them minerals because they start eating wood and stuff. Dogs might eat chicken poo, might eat uh, kangaroo poo in this case, but it's a habit and he really loves to do it. And what have you tried so far? Well, I've tried, I've tried sort of Shouting at him, you know. I've yeah, tried, yeah. I've tried oh, restraining him, but yeah. he's so quick, you know. Fast and oh, he's fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah as soon yeah. as he sees it, and, and he knows it's wrong. He knows you don't like he it. He knows it. As soon as I shout at him, he looks at me, you know. But that's yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. It's gone. Could have stemmed from boredom. If he was been in a cage before yeah. and he's nothing to do, he might start eating his own stuff, and then he thinks the kangaroo poo is a little bit tastier, or a little bit more fibre, maybe. I don't know. I've never tried it <laughs> myself. But here we go. Right, we, we've chosen a remote trainer. Jeff wants something that's fairly durable, long distance, good, quick response rate, and um, a submersible collar, submersible handpiece. I won't go into the details. They're on the right uh, on the on the website, and it doesn't matter which you choose. Just make sure you get good quality that's going to work and won't turn themselves off. That sort of thing. So it's got a reach one. My little trick and advice to Jeff is put the collar on the dog for about a day and a half and don't use it. Let him just sit with the collar, not too tight, make sure the probes are touching the skin and then it's all la -di da Don't show him the handpiece so he don't, doesn't think it's you. So I'd be standing there like this and, and for want of a better word, set him up. Go out and the worst situation is when you're out and you, he's doing the dog poo situation. Uh, sorry, the kangaroo poo. All right, so you, you take him out and you go, go on then, no problem. And you're walking along and it's okay, no problem, da da da. And he looks sideways at a bit of kangaroo poo. You turn the collar up to the high level and you're using surprise as your biggest advantage. And I personally, my method might have different advice from someone else. Don't say a word. Just give him a big crack with the collar and then da 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 da. And good boy, come back here and you are now the good guy rewarding him for the good behavior. So there's something strange that's going on every time he looks at a bit of kangaroo droppings and you're the guy rewarding him for not going near them. And you're reinforcing the behavior instead of being the bad guy all the time and there's something funky going on with the thing. Don't show him the handpiece. Too often I hear from people that go, we put the collar on the dog and he's, he's good and we don't need it. We take it off and he goes and does what he, whatever he wants. What we want to try and train to is the fact that you don't need the collar again, which is the key with all of our products. And our training guide helps this. Sorry if I'm speaking too sparse because this is really exciting <laughs> <laughs> to a dog trainer and a personal, uh, someone who does dog training collars. Um, don't show him the handpiece because there's so many people around they put it in their pocket to grab the handpiece and the dog ducks like that because they've done it all completely wrong. Mm. Now, the other rule is once you solve that problem, move on to the next problem. Don't start doing anything else until you've solved that problem and you're really happy and I'm yeah. expecting two to three to four weeks before you even think about using it for anything else. Yeah, yeah and then you can go home and leave the collar on him. It doesn't need to come off. Mm. Uh, obviously, keep an eye on the skin, make sure there's no irritation. Yeah. But if you follow our... Um, our fitting guide and all that sort of stuff, then you should be fine as far as fitting. That's great. Go get them. Yeah, thanks. Keep great. in touch. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. This is exciting. Yes, <laughs> and I shall have a new idea of what dog breath's like. I oh, know, dog breath. Don't you, don't you hate it? The dog comes home and he wants to lick you on the face, and he's been picking up kangaroo poo. It's just not on. All right, mate. You're all the okay. best. Thanks very much indeed. See you later, okay. mate. No